In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Deoxys web application. I'm going to cover several different options for deployment, starting with the easiest first and then ending with the more slightly difficult option. And hopefully one of these options will work for you. So the first option is to use Cloudflare to deploy a static Deoxys web application. And this option is good if you don't have a backend server to support your front end, but rather you're developing a client side application that's going to connect to a remote API server. And so essentially that means you don't have your own backend server that you need to run. And for that reason, you can use Cloudflare's pages to deploy a static website. So let's start by creating a new Deoxys web application. And this is not going to be a full stack application. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the defaults. Now, since this video is all about deployment, we're not going to write any code, but I have put together some code to help demonstrate making a request to an external API server. So this code makes a fetch request to NASA's astronomy picture of the day API and it returns a result containing a link to an image as well as some other metadata. Now to use this API, we need an API key, and you can see that I'm using this key in the getData function. Now it's important to remember that when we compile this code, we are going to generate a WASM file, and that WASM file is going to contain this API key. So essentially anyone can download a WASM file and look at the contents of that file, and they'll be able to see any sensitive information that file contains. So if you're using Deoxys as a client-side application without a backend server, always remember not to expose any of your secret data. Okay, so now let's go ahead and compile the code and see what the result is. So this is the result and this is what we expect to see when we deploy our app to Cloudflare. So now that we know that the app is working, let's go ahead and run the build command to generate the production files. So after running the build command, the Oxus is going to generate the files that we need to upload to Cloudflare. And you can find these files in the target folder under DX and you need to drill down all the way to the public folder for the release version. And in the public folder, you'll find an index.html file. And this file is responsible for loading all the assets from the assets folder, including the WASM file. So all we have to do now is upload the contents of the public folder to Cloudflare and deploy it as a static website. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. Now, if you don't have a Cloudflare account, you can sign up for a free account. And once you've logged in, you want to head over to the workers and pages menu and then click on the pages tab. And from the Pages tab, we have two options. We can either import an existing Git repository or we can upload the files directly. For this example, I'm going to upload the files directly. So clicking on the Upload Assets button is going to take us to a screen where we need to enter a project name. So now we have a URL where our app will be deployed to. So all we have to do is upload the assets from our computer and hit the Deploy button. So here you can see that I've uploaded the public folder. And once those files have been uploaded, we can then deploy our app. So once the app has been deployed, we can preview it by clicking on the project link. Now we may take some time for the app to be fully deployed. So just give it some time and eventually it will be ready to view. And so finally, we have our app hosted with Cloudflare. Now, just on a side note, if you want to change the URL, you can configure Cloudflare to use your own custom domain name. Okay, so in this example, we've seen how to deploy a static website, but what about a full stack application with a backend server? For that, we can't use Cloudflare, but I do have two options for you. We'll start with the easiest option first, and that is to use a deployment provider called Render. And Render makes it easy to deploy your app. You can either do this using GitHub or a Docker image. So let's start by creating a new Deoxys application. And this time I'm going to select the full stack option because we want a backend server for our app. So here's the source code for the app, and it contains a server function called echo server. And all it does is echo back any input that's been entered into a text field. So nothing too fancy. The only update that I'm going to make to this code is to remove the hero component because we don't want that component getting in the way. So now let's compile and run the app just to see what the result is. So here's what the app looks like. And if I enter some characters, the server is going to echo back those characters. Now the purpose of this example is to demonstrate that we have a backend server. And so our goal is to run this server using render. And when we run the server, it's also going to dispatch all the assets needed for the app to work. So now that we've seen how the app works, let's go ahead and build the app to generate those release files that we need to deploy to render. Now for this example, we're going to commit the code to a GitHub repository. Now normally you wouldn't commit the target folder, but in this case we have to commit the DX folder which is located in the target folder. And this is because the DX folder contains a server that we need to run, so we can go ahead and ignore all the other files in the target folder and not commit them to the repository. And so this is what the repository should look like. And if we drill down to the web folder, you can see that we have the server as well as the public folder that contains the assets for the app. And now we're ready to deploy our app on render. So go ahead and create an account if you don't have one already. And once you've logged in, click on the add new menu and then click on the web service link to create a new web service. Now from this point, we need to connect our GitHub repository. Now, since I'm using a public account, I'm going to go ahead and select the public GitHub repository option. And from here, we need to enter our GitHub repository and start applying some settings. 
Now, most of the settings you can keep with the default value, but if you take a look at the build command, you'll notice that it's running cargo build. But this is not required since we've already built our app, but unfortunately, we can't leave this field blank. So that means every time we deploy our app, we're going to have to go through the build process. For the start command, we can run the server directly, and this is why we included it in the Git repository. Now, this isn't an ideal solution because most likely if you've compiled your app under Windows, this isn't going to work for you. Now, moving on, there's one last thing that we need to do before we can deploy the app, and that is to set two environment variables. So the first variable that we're going to set is the IP variable, and we're going to set this to all zero so that the Deoxys server can listen on all available network interfaces. And the second variable is the port, and we're going to set this to port 8080. And now we're ready to deploy the app, and this process might take some time because, as I said, the build command is going to get called. So just give it some time until the process is fully completed. And once the app has been fully deployed, you can then click on the project link to view the app. Now, just a quick note, if you're using the free plan, your app will power down after 15 minutes of inactivity, and it will take a while for it to power up again. And now let's take a look at the last option that I have for you, and that is the do-it-yourself approach. And that means managing your own VPS. Now, this option is quite involved. It means that you have to download all the necessary software as well as manage the security of the server. Now, to keep this guide simple, we're only going to focus on getting the Deoxys server up and running. So if you look at the terminal, you'll notice that I'm logged into a cloud server as root, and this is a big no-no, because the general practice is to deactivate the root user and create a separate user that has privileges to run certain commands. And again, this is just to emphasize all the steps that you will need to take when managing your own VPS. But let's continue and download all the tools that we need to get the Deoxys server up and running. Now, before we start, there's one last thing that I want to mention, and that is that I upgraded the Ubuntu version on the cloud server to match the version that I have on my development machine. And this is so that we don't get any errors when we're running the Deoxys server because the server would have been built on the same target. Now, let's start downloading the tools that we need. So first, we are going to start by installing Git so that we can clone the repository that we created earlier. And now I'm going to cd into the home directory and initialize the web app repository in this directory. And now let's cd into the web app folder to verify that the target folder is there. And since it's there, let's go ahead and cd into the folder that contains the server. So there's the server, and I'm going to run it to make sure that there are no errors. So it looks like the server is working fine. And now we can move on and download the next tool that we need, which is Nginx. And we're going to use Nginx as a reverse proxy. And now the Nginx is installed, let's go ahead and verify that it's active. So Nginx is active, but we won't be able to access the default website until we modify the firewall settings to allow remote connections to port 80. And so to do this, we're going to install the UFW command line tool, which is going to make it easy for us to modify the firewall settings. And so now we can run UFW allow HTTP, and this will essentially allow remote connections to port 80. So with this change, we should be able to access the default website. And this is what we get for the default website, but we're not done yet. We need to configure Nginx to act as a reverse proxy. So I'm going to navigate to the sites available folder, which is found in etc Nginx. And this folder contains the default configuration file for the default website. And I'm going to modify this file and replace the default server block with the new server block. And this new server block is going to tell Nginx to pass connections from the client to the Deoxys web server. Now, the reason why I chose Nginx as a reverse proxy as opposed to directly serving the Deoxys server is so that you can have multiple Deoxys applications running on different ports. And then Nginx can route the client request to the correct proxy server using the server name. So it's a quick and easy way to host multiple websites. OK, so now let's test the Nginx server configuration to make sure that the changes that we just applied work. OK, so the test is successful and now we can restart the Nginx server. But we also have to make sure that we run the Deoxys web server. Otherwise, we're going to get a bad gateway error. So with those changes applied, we should now be able to preview the website. But there's one last thing that we need to do, and that is we need to use a process manager to keep the Deoxys web server running. And that's because when the current session that I'm using closes, then the Deoxys web server will stop running. And so we need a way to keep the Deoxys web server running permanently, and that's why we're going to use a process manager. Now, most Linux distributions have SystemMD as a default service manager. So we'll use SystemMD to keep the Deoxys server running. And to do this is pretty simple. All we have to do is create a service file in the system folder, which is found in etc systemmd and then system. So here is the basic settings that we need for the service. And all it contains is a description of the service and the service to start. And in our case, the service to start is the full pass to the Dioxys server. And that's all we need to get the Dioxys server running in the background. So let's start the service now and check the status to make sure that it's active. And now the service is active, so the Dioxys server will continue to run in the background even after we've logged out of the session. So just to recap, in this video I've shown you three different ways to host a Dioxys web application. You also have the option of using GitHub Pages to host a static website, and you can check out fly.io if you want to deploy a full stack application. 
So if you found this video useful, please consider giving it a like and I'll see you all on the next video.